Can we have greater success? Can we rise higher and go further without sacrificing our humanity, losing our minds? And the answer is yes. How do we equip ourselves for the journey? How do we make my, ourselves anti-fragile and overcome the inevitable obstacles in the way of anyone who wants to do anything good in this world? Today, we will unpack that very practically, very specifically, in a new type of episode of Headspace, in which I will be interviewing graduates from my first-tier exponential life coaching program. And the first one, the guinea pig of this, is my friend Brandon Nicely. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be amazing, an amazing episode. You're going to absolutely love it and take a lot of practical expertise and value out of it if you watch all the way to the end. So let's start with reintroducing you to the public. Of course, I know everything about you. Actually, not everything. <laughs> being, being in this program revealed some stuff about you that I didn't know, which was like a revelation to me. It was really great. I'm like an old time tech guy, but I spent a good bit of time you know, as an engineer and then I jumped into IBM in the 80s and then the 90s started building companies. And we built a big one um, in New York City. Then I jumped over to private equity to be able to understand the finance game and, and had some year, a few years working and putting big deals together than the media and telecommunications and building some of the Internet um, technologies that were key to sort of rolling out a global scale Internet. And then got involved in, in some in some really corporate development uh, sort of mergers and acquisitions uh, strategies that we developed for global satellite communications and then uh, did a couple other things and decided that at some point there was, uh, I wanted to move or transition beyond just sort of corporate development and corporate engagements to do things at the intersection of purpose and profit. I'm going to interject here for a second. Did you notice the sheer volume and longevity of Brandon's work? Does it blow you away? It blows me away. Well, here's the insight. You don't have this kind of longevity, this kind of caliber without having the humility and the discipline to stop and recalibrate your life every once in a while in a deep, profound, and very strategic way. So listen how he does that. Um, the way I'm built naturally, kind of like, uh, you know, I was kind of like a burn the ships kind of guy that, you know, <laughs> charge the front lines and was always pretty fully committed to what I was up to. And the thing that's really interesting about that, it sounds very romantic, the whole idea of burning the ships, <laughs> and I've had this conversation with entrepreneurs this week, I think no less than three times. I ask entrepreneurs, like, you know, okay, let's, they get all excited about burning the ships. And, 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 and then I ask them, well, is your wife and kids on the ships or are they with you? <laughs> <laughs> are they on the are they on the island somewhere left behind right yeah i mean it's it's funny because we, it sounds great but then you look at it practically okay you can be successful and maybe you're by yourself maybe you're worth a team of people but then you know do you have a family do you have a wife do you have friends what about your your parents what about your siblings you know i mean do you have any commitment to anything other than the task that you're up to and then what happens if it fails exactly what happens not if it fails but when it fails the ability to be anti-fragile and to thrive, overcome, grow, and increase your level of success after you fail the first time, the second time, is crucial to this journey. Having a, a venture that represents you, mm -hmm. and sometimes we can be over-invested or overly invested in that venture because of lack that we have in our own lives. Like maybe we're trying to press into an identity that comes from and some significance, or maybe we're trying to prove to the world that we're right and, and they were mm -hmm. wrong. I think very popular these days to think about the idea of burning the ships and being totally committed and being sort of all in on what you're up to. But what I like about this program, it's the first time that it's actually somebody says, hey, let's stop <laughs> and let's determine whether or not the course that we're taking is where we want to go. He's so right about that. I can't tell you how often I speak to some of the most brilliant people on the planet and how not well designed their lives are to match the great potential, the great impact, the great contribution they can bring to the world. So they fall short. It just happens all the time. 
And so what I really like about it is this idea of life formation or organizing life on purpose. That exercise isn't really well thought out with a set of uh, really you know, research-based considerations. Um, and this is more than just being happy or feeling happy. This is how do you chart a course to a life that you really want? This is a very important point. See, we set up a goal and aspiration that is just beyond the horizon and we just barrel towards that goal and what we do is we don't calculate we don't equip ourselves with the qualities the dimensionality the skills that it gets us to go over the horizon right because daily weekly hourly we need a certain kind of mindset we need optimism we need creativity we need the ability to overcome obstacles. We need to get along with people. We need to have relational skills, communication skills, um, mindset or heart change skills. And those things are crucial. So we don't pay attention to the skills that will take us there. We just pay attention to the goal and we don't reach the goal. And then we're sort of collapsing and eroding and discouraged and in pain and resentful and bitter and all those things happen and it happens over and over and over again for amazing remarkable people and that's what we're addressing here with brandon in our conversation the classic idiom is the idea of work hard play hard right right yeah yeah uh-huh <laughs> and so it's it feeds again into your strengths and it actually does not address any of your weaknesses. If you're trying to develop something that takes a lot of energy and you're trying to do something that's very difficult to do, like a, an entrepreneurial venture, it's kind of like we call it carrying a rock up a hill. You have mm -hmm. to be fit to carry a rock up the hill. And one of the quickest ways to sort of not be fit is to work hard, play hard. <laughs> I think that uh, what happened was I gained some success in building something way beyond what I thought would have you know, ever happened and found myself, you know, blowing up my family life and, and just not uh, giving it the attention that it needed. And so that I've suffered from since, you know, and it didn't have to happen, <laughs> which right. is the yeah. sad thing. By the way, the big thing that Brandon's referring to that was bigger than he imagined was a billion dollar company. Not many people are even capable of doing something like that in this world. And I want you to not miss this. What he's emphasizing is that he could have done the same thing without losing his family, without sacrificing so much. This is really important stuff for us to understand. Is it a weakness or is it a blind spot? Can you identify it? Can you actually name it, right? And it takes courage, right? It, we are sometimes pretty ego-driven people, but actually bringing it to the center of your pursuits and saying, I'm going to turn this from a weakness into an actual strength. And very few people do that. And I think that's one of the secrets for actually long-term success. The program started really strong um, when you began, you know, discussion around delight and meaning mm. and connection. Yeah. And so you can actually be involved in many civic organizations, serve on many boards, and not get any delight from it, right? Or not be have or not have meaning attached to it, or any connection with the people. And so what I love then is the transition to the radar, which mm -hmm. allows us to look at seven major dimensions, and then I sort of you know when you overlay overlay those those elements those two like things, delight yeah. and meaning and connection with the radar, then you begin getting a really clear field view, I would say. What Brandon is talking about here is the Excel formula and the Excel radar, which are two tools that I teach in the program that allow you to look at decision-making, the moves you wanna make and discern because it's all about decision-making and also to look at your life in a 360 kind of way. And it reveals things that are unexpected things to many people that are even very experienced, very capable. And that's the value of it. It was really provided when I began thinking about delight and connection and meaning and integrating things into these dimensional things, kind of dimensional sort of views of life. It helped me think about what I could do, you know, and once you identify the target of yeah, the problem, you can start moving. Yeah. then you can start solving it. Right. It's not that mm -hmm. it doesn't take rocket science sometimes to solve it. It's more about, hey, I wasn't even thinking about this. It's almost like for me, it's a field of view yeah. and then depth focus. Like, are you focusing on 
on delight, meaning, or connection? Or are you focusing on just getting something done? You can look at career paths. You can look at a relationship. You can look at a community. You can look at the calendar. You can look at a career. You know, that you can let, basically put that lens on and look anywhere and see things so much more clearly uh, that is just mind blowing, right? It's such a simple tool that you can't unlearn, basically. And I just love that. And I also was surprised at not just their, the, the caliber of the people, but then also the um, humility and openness. Yeah, you know, the yeah. vulnerability was really impressive. One of the secret sauces of exponential life is these small cohorts of peers that are connected humble, vulnerable, supporting each other, learning from each other. That's what Brandon is referring to. If you weren't committed every week to come, mm -hmm. you were after that first meeting. You know, it's hard sometimes in your schedule unless you're really committed to it. And everybody was committed to it, which was, was pleasant to see. So the key to changing your life is changing the way that you see. Mm-hmm and the way that you see your life and then ultimately planning ahead to create a life that you love and 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 that actually addresses some of those or shines light on some of those blind spots you want to really get into it quickly really see change right away we, we teach these quick win techniques and literally the first week right things that will get you out of the of, out of a funk get you out of uh, a state of heaviness invigorate you give you a, a new lens at life right away and then we do some heavy lifting right so we do some stuff that is okay we need to um, i mean this is emotional labor stuff emotional labor is not that is that is a long-term investment is not easy to do but it's completely important and crucial for you to succeed long term and you have this group around you that helps you with that emotional labor right and so you have this balance of quick wins and emotional labor moving you along in, in this community of people that are high caliber people cheering you on and, and sometimes calling you out on stuff, right? And we had, some, we, had some, we had some conversations where in a loving way people would go, you know what, I think you're not thinking about this deeply enough or you're not seeing this. And um, I think invariably people would come back and say, thanks for that. I actually needed that, you know, and uh, it was really mm -hmm. remarkable. And yeah. I think that's what that's what people really want. They don't want to just be successful in life, mm -hmm. although that sometimes gets moved to the front because it's the only thing that they're considering. Yeah. When you really put those lens on, then you're like, ah, oh, I really don't want just to be successful. I want to be successful in a in a holistic way. And I'm actually struggling to not overload the program because there's so much more, but I think a lot of it will overflow into the mastery program with the sort of the long-term inner circle um, of people mm -hmm. just really wanting to do life together and, and build great things. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end, we create this vision story uh, thing, this exercise that is very, very involved. It's not just envisioning what you want to do, but in what it entails, all the dimensionality, th looking through all the lenses and dimensionality. So it's holistic, it's clear, it's achievable, and it's, it's uh, exciting and realistic, right? It's actionable. Um, so what are the high, some of the highlights on, on your vision story uh, that, that, you, that maybe perhaps, because I know you're a deep thinker and you think about this stuff all the time, and you and I like brainstorm and, and dream together all the time. But it, was there something in this exercise, the vision story, that surprised you a little bit and was like, oh, this is new? I wanted to be real clear that I want to invest relationally. I want my family and friends to know that I care about them. And, and I want that to be reflected with the time investment and mm -hmm. intentionality in that, right? The second thing, well, the other thing I, I wanted to do, which I was surprised in, is to actually invest in health and mobility. I kind of assumed I'd already done that, right? But I have a new sort of invigorated view on how I want to approach health as you age a little bit, right? Um, we're, I knew we, you know, we're working on building a sustainable impact company on a global basis that can outlive us, right? That's, that's one thing we care about. 
but I, and I've been involved in building this new global platform, have my pet project, right? That's been front and center and clear. And then we know we want to serve the poor and we love doing that. But the thing that sort of surprised me is I knew that building a home base with entertainment and hospitality and really having a platform where people could come in and stay and hang out is, was another sort of thing that came out of this for me. Yeah. So let me ask you, like, you, you know, you've worked on this for a long time. What surprised you the most? I think I didn't anticipate um, the, Im the, the immediate emotional and intellectual connection we all felt for each other, like from week one. Be because in my mind, okay, we're all busy, we're all mature, right? We, and we're guys, you know, guys are don't, you know, don't discuss feelings very often, you know, <laughs> like th this is not our default setting. I mean, and there's exceptions, obviously. It was this immediate ele electric connection in the first meeting that I did not expect whatsoever. And some of it was just prompted by some of the exercises that we did together. But uh, it was just overwhelming to me. I mean, uh, like I was tearing up and, you know, I, it was just, wow. I have no intention of being somebody else's guru, right? Uh, I have no desire to be like the, guy, the, the man with the insights. I want to be someone who has tools that can work for the person and they, they can use it for themselves. And I think that was sort of that was c clearly there, right? When people just took a tool, it's not about my insight, it's not about my magical view of their life. That's not what I want. It was, it was an actual tool that was, that was timeless, ti tried and, and true, that people took and then they implemented that. And then the next week they would come back and go, oh my gosh, I had this huge breakthrough. All of us as humans have a desire to execute on things that are important. Yeah not just professional. Mm -hmm. And I think the magic of that meaning is what was the fuel that ignited, you know, I think that the connection among us. So yeah. thank you for doing that. So there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of tools, a lot of skills you can acquire to elevate your life in remarkable ways. And it's not about perfection, far from it. And uh, I share about this next. It was actually super helpful for me to actually watch my life. You know, I'm teaching this to others, but I am now more carefully going, okay, so what's my, you know, what, <laughs> it's the lens still balanced. It's, it's, the, it's the radar flat somewhere. I had this disagreement with my wife and, and Deb was like, so you're you're supposed to know this stuff. Why don't you implement some of the techniques that you're teaching people? Uh oh, no, she was, didn't. Uh, she totally did. She went there, and and I was just it was because I was sulking. I was just not, I was not in the moment mastering my emotions and and not able to actually overcome quickly, which I teach people to. This is how you overcome quickly the quick win techniques that are really powerful. But I was not using them right. And, uh, and, and now I'm accountable because I'm supposed to be teaching this, this, these skills to people. And so she called me out and I was like, honestly, in the, in the moment I was really hurt. But later <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, and, and <laughs> oh, that's, that's, um, that's a great wife for you right there. It is a great you know? wife. Yes. Yes. So, and and also with the obsession, she had this, we had this conversation, several conversations lately about sort of long-term plans and directions and things like that, which we try to do regularly and and she called me out on being doing too much and and i'm like gosh i'm supposed to be good at this and um but uh, yeah. but that's the point the point is um i feel like i'm teaching something that has helped me over decades and do really amazing things and the the the, the core idea is that if your baseline of holistic success and happiness and fulfillment is high of, you'll never be a five out of five ever. But if your baseline across the board, multidimensionally, is between a four or a five, it's an amazing place to be. It's a high performance place to be, high impact place to be. So yes, you're not, you're never going to be perfect. But if you're, if you have the skills to elevate your baseline across the board between a four and a five, you know, not a one or a two where it's like this lopsided, flat, challenging thing. Um, you can bounce back, right? Even if you're, even if you're sort of, you're, you know, you're trending towards the four or the three, uh, you're aware of it. And so many people just are not aware of it. They don't know how to get mm -hmm. out of it. They don't. They have the system, the skills, or even the ecosystem to call them out on that. And uh, we, Deb and I were laughing because we had like this 
a series of sort of pretty serious conversations and, and we're and and that was like you know what i realized we're so used to being really happy that f this feels weird this feels this is just not normal so we're we're so we're like really wrestling with this and i go yeah because honestly i i know so many really what you know good intentioned people that have essentially succumbed to mediocrity in their in their marriage so their baseline is a three or a two or a one and they've literally accepted it they've 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 accepted mediocrity and i would rather be not accept mediocrity and fight for excellence in my marriage to f for flourishing and happiness and joy um, every day of my life so that when we do have a bump and a setback uh, it's actually uncomfortable this is not normal we need to go back to the to the normal the good the amazing right i mean well you're a great example you know for decades and have instigated and be you know, have been a catalyst for so many people that are, I think, high performing people that you've helped them, you know, think about their life and happiness. And they've, and I'm, we've seen them, you know, like uh, achieve it. And, but there's this leveling up each time, like you've mm -hmm. attained a certain level, then there's, there's still a game to be had above this, right? Which I love that you're leading the way there. That's all that matters. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for being my uh, partner in crime for so many years, and and being a humble student even after that, which is which is really an honor, you know, and um, and 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 being on board and being the first guinea pig of this of these conversations that I want to have regularly, right? Because I want to be able to illustrate this stuff in real life examples, and also lift up the people that are doing this important work. On themselves so that they can do important work in the world and and it's 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 an absolute pleasure and joy to to be doing so together uh so everyone else thank you so much for tuning in if this has spoken to you just subscribe to the channel um subscribe to the newsletter where we have now over eight as of the recording of this we have over eight thousand subscribers to the newsletter uh but we want the channel to grow so uh, subscribe on both on both sides yeah and if join you, the movement baby it's like, you join the movement baby and it's a uh, movement there we go and if you love uh, if you've some of the stuff that's really resonate with you just go to exponential life uh, exponential dot life uh, without the e just exponential with starting with an x and uh, check it out and perhaps this could be something that changes your life as well